it's Ian, the Off-Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. It is a holiday here in the United States. Happy Labor Day. Are you supposed to say Happy Labor Day? I never know. I never know about the correct thing to say happy or whatever it's supposed to be. But hello, welcome to another Maker Monday. I'm so glad that y'all are here. And uh, if you're catching this on the replay, this is the part of the show where we just kind of hang out for a second, wait for those notifications to go out the door from YouTube to let people know that I'm alive here on YouTube. Uh, we've got Bev here, we've got Becca here, we've got Barb here, Nancy, Nan, uh, KJ, KJ Bruises. Welcome everybody, I'm so glad that y'all are here. Nan says, I wanna learn how to use my, I think she meant to say cricket, I'm not 100% sure, but I think she meant to say cricket. This is my first time. I'm so glad that you're here today and I can't wait to get started with everybody. Uh, let's see, who else? We've got the purple wall here. Hello, I'm so excited about this project. I am too. I'm excited about this project and I've been wanting to make a video on this forever, but this is now the time to sit down and start working on this. So the debt-free quilter. Hello, I don't think I've seen you before. Welcome. So it's gonna be interesting today. Um, let me walk through a couple of announcements before we get started today. An announcement number one, I'm gonna be doing, um, what am I gonna be doing? I'm going to be taking this video, of course we're doing the live video here that you can walk with me if you're gonna be walking along with me, if you're catching this on the replay and walking through this process with me. Excellent, welcome, I'm so glad to have you here and this video will always remain up for you to do that. However, I'm gonna take this video and I'm gonna edit it, edit it, edit, 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 I'm gonna edit it down into a more compact and condensed version, so that way you kind of get the cliff notes. So if you hear me like saying, okay, we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna walk through something so that way I have the footage and voiceover available, that's what's happening. You're kind of gonna get a backstage uh, pass as you see how I put videos together sometimes. So we may take a break for a moment and I might be like, okay guys, I'm gonna record this quick little bit really quick and then come back and we'll do it. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to play out today, but I'm definitely um, going to be working like an outro and maybe an intro into this. Oh, hey, Nan. Thank you so much. I heard a noise that it scared me. <laughs> I didn't realize I got a super chat. Thank you so much, Nancy. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it scared me. What can I say? Um, all right. So there we go. I was like, what is this noise? What happened? It didn't pop up on the screen for some reason. I don't understand why I must have some, oh, I know why, because it's back behind other layers. That's why I put it behind other layers so you can see it. Now let's try. There we go, now we can actually see it. <laughs> Thank you again, Nancy. I appreciate that so much. Oh, okay, the debt free quilter is Heather. Hi, Heather, welcome. Um, so anyways, um, hello, I'll pay the rent. I love, it's such a funny phrase, pay the rent. Appreciate you guys being here today. All right, so anyways, so you're gonna get a back behind the scenes preview of what's happening and stuff like that. So we'll kind of take that as it happens, right? Um, next thing I am going to take next week off of live and I do have a video that is going to go up next week So you're not going to be without your off-kilter crafter fix for the week. I am going to post another video Next Monday, uh, but it won't be a live video It's just going to be one of my regular videos and it is going to be making a card. I have not made a card in Over a year. It's probably been closer to a year and a half and two years a year and a half maybe two years but I'm finally getting back into the swing of things. So I have a card video coming to you next Monday. Make sure to check that out when that goes live. And then there was something else that I was gonna talk about. Don't forget, we also have coming up next month, get your Jelly Rolls and Jelly Roll Juniors ready to go as we do some quilting together as I have my little quilty, quilt along for the Halloween pattern. Well, it's not really a Halloween pattern. I'm gonna make it a Halloween quilt, but you can make whatever you want with whatever Jelly Rolls that you select. Um, as we go through today or through that process not today Next month in October. I don't my my mouth is just not connecting to the brain today I don't know what's going on So we got a lot going on in the next several weeks There was something else that I was gonna mention and of course I didn't write down my notes And so it's gone out the window, but we're gonna go ahead and get started for today I will 
say that um, I am going to be working in Cricut Design Space tonight. And when I do that, that will take up all of my screen real estate and I will not be able to see your comments until I switch back over into the program that lets me see your comments. So if you have a question, put it in all caps. And if you see that I'm not answering your question, give me a couple of minutes before you put it back in. You're always welcome to put your question back in for me. So that way I will see it, but just know it might take a couple of times for you to put it in before I see it and I read it out. I'm gonna do my best to monitor the chat. I have a couple of people behind the scenes monitoring my chat for me. Uh, my moderators all have the wrenches next to their name. So uh, a couple of them can reach out to me and let me know. Also, thank you to Becca for letting me know that my thumbnail had a spelling error in it. I always, dyslexic, if I flip those letters around. I don't know why it just happens, but anyways. So in Cricut Design Space, while I'm, I'm doing all that, I'm not gonna be able to see your comments. I'm gonna do my best to come back and pick up any questions. Tracy's here, hello Tracy, welcome. All right, let's get started. <laughs> I literally hear an ice cream truck outside. Should I go grab my wallet and run outside right now and get some ice cream? It is tempting, but I'm not going to. All right, so. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of behind the scenes right now. I'm gonna go ahead and intro this video so that way I have a video clip that I can use to intro this video. And we're just gonna, y'all are just like the live audience sitting out there as the cameras turn on and get going. So I'm gonna record this really quick and then we'll move on. Hey everybody, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're gonna to be using the Cricut to create quilt labels. Now it's very important that you always label your quilts because remember, the label is the story to your quilt. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to put one together. See how cool that is? Y'all got to see the behind the scenes. So, um, also, I've, I, that's the other thing. I finally remember the, the other thing. Down in the description below, I did a blog post for Cotton Cuts on how important quilt labels are. You should always be putting your labels on your quilt. Like I said, it tells the story of that quilt. It tells who, put, who pieced it, who did the quilting if it wasn't you, what year it was, and there's a lot of information that goes on to quilt labels that's completely up to you. There's no must-haves for quilt labels other than, of course, your name and the quilter name. Those are pretty much standard across every quilt label. A lot of people will like to put what city they're in whenever they put it together, so that way it gives a regional um, kind of idea of where your quilt uh, was created, but that's not necessary. And really, quilt labels are completely up to you. Whatever information you wanna put on it, it's completely up to you, especially if you're giving it as a gift, you know, giving it as a wedding present, you know, many happy years together, given at the, you know, whatever wedding, or a, a birthday or something like that. A lot of times these quilts are given for uh, events that really want to be remembered, and, you, and that's a good place to put that on. And it's a good place for you to show your personality as well, because you can decorate your quilt label with lots of decoration um, if you want to and stuff like that. Using the Cricut makes it a lot easier too. All right, let's talk about some of the things that we're going to, I know, like ice cream, run and run. Um, all right, so let's talk about what some of the things we're going to need for tonight. I'm gonna to turn on to this camera here. All right, so for this process, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with the Cricut. You can always use um, either just well, let's talk about some of the, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Things that you're gonna need, parchment paper, or is this butcher's paper? I don't remember what this is. This is um, butcher's paper. This is butcher's paper. Uh, so this is butcher's paper. You're gonna need butcher's paper to help protect different surfaces. You're going to need some um, laser papers. So at your local, office store. They have laser paper. It works best with laser paper. However, regular paper does work too. So don't worry if you end up uh, with just regular paper or that's all you have. Regular paper works well for this as well. You're going to need some sort of heat um, tape, some heat resistant tape. They make tape specially designed 
for the heat process. So you'll need some of that tape. You're gonna need, of course, some ink, uh, excuse me, butcher paper. Butcher paper, there we go. <laughs> Becca just texted me and was like, butcher paper, butcher paper. Um, so uh, you're gonna need some infusible ink pens. Now what are infusible ink pens? Cricut, of course, makes infusible ink pens, but there are many types of sublimation inks, and that's what you really want is a sublimation ink. There are different types of markers. Cricut is not the only brand that sells sublimation markers, and really what's happening is inside these markers, there is a, uh, a, a dye. It's a liquid dye, basically, and when you heat it, it sublimates. Sublimation is the process in w which it basically goes from... Uh, in real, in realistically, it's when uh, like something like dry ice, a solid goes into a gas form, skipping the liquid form. In this case, it's not exactly that way because in the ink inside is a liquid, of course. But basically, you are infusing those dyes into your fabric and the fabric has to be special and by special I mean not anything too incredibly special but you have to use uh, fabric that is high uh, polyester count so the higher the polyester count the better right so the more polyester in the fabric the better your design is going to come out if it has a blend so a cotton polyester blend then that is going to um, not give you a very good result because basically you want as much. Christy says regular paper works as well. She knows because she also does this process. Um, basically you want as high of a polyester because that's what your sublimation ink is going to bond with. When it bonds into the, fa the fibers of the fabric, it's going to stay in that fabric. It's not going to wash out. It actually fuses with those uh, with those uh, threads. So it's it's pretty awesome. But you want a polyester uh, as close to 100% as you can get. Now I am going to be making a label that is six and a half by six and a half. Why why am I making it that size? Well, because that's the size of grid that I have. Honestly. A six and a half by six and a half is almost perfect for making quilt labels. And what I like to do is I like to fold them in half and sew them into the corner as I'm putting the binding on. But we'll talk about that more once we get there. All right, you of course are gonna need a um, heat source of some kind. I'm gonna be using my Cricut Easy Press. This is the smaller version, um, but I have a Cricut Easy Press. You'll need some kind of heat press, an iron, can work, but a lot of times the iron does not get hot enough to actually sublimate the ink into your fabric. So um, be warned of that. Although Christy, uh, Christy's in the chat right now, she can tell me if her iron, because I think she used just a regular iron for hers, but I'm not sure, I don't remember. All right, so those are what you're gonna need for your um, quilt labels. Let's go ahead and head into Cricut Design Space and learn how to put the label together in Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna flip over to Cricut Design Space. Now remember, I'm not gonna be able to see your comments as I go through our demonstration here, but if you have anything, please feel free to put it in all caps in the chat for me and I will get to it as soon as I can. All right, so I'm in Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project. So it's gonna load up my canvas and we're just going to be using basic shapes today. Even if you have the, um, if you don't pay for Cricut access, you will have access to just the basic shapes. <clears throat> I say that and I have a spinning wheel right now. Why is this not loading? I know part of it is I'm running all kinds. Oh, unable to load data. 
Okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, let me see if I can find, because all I need is a square. Okay, so we do have a square and it is free. I'm gonna add this to my canvas. All right, so if you're not familiar with Cricut Design Space, that is the environment where you create your design to send to the Cricut. So I'm gonna be using this. This is basically your canvas to create any of the, any of the shapes or items that you're gonna be cutting out or using. You would use, excuse me, you would use Cricut Design Space to do that. It's kind of like the Photoshop of the Cricut world, really. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and turn my shape white. So I, I put on a free square and remember that um, all the shapes are, some of the shapes are available for free without a access uh, membership. You don't have to have a membership. The square is always free and you can use the square. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn this 90 degrees because remember our quilt label in my quilt is going to be in the corner Oh, not 90 degrees, 90 degrees just takes me to another square. I'm at 45. There we go, 45. So I've turned my quilt label 45 degrees. I always like to um, design using one half of it. And I'm, I'm basically going to uh, use the bottom half to do my actual designing in um, because anything, uh, it gets folded over right here and I'm gonna, keep all my designs down in the bottom portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some text into this now. So I'm gonna say name of quilt. And I am running a lot of processes on my computer right now, so it is running a little bit slow as it tries to keep up with what I'm doing. My poor little computer, I need to really consider buying a new one because this poor little computer just cannot keep up hardly anymore. All right, so there is that. I'm gonna go ahead and change this. I'm using Cricut Sans. I'm gonna change it to a writing font because I'm gonna use these pens to write. Now, you don't have to use a Cricut. As long as you're using some sort of sublimation ink, you could hand write this label out and not even have to worry about using a Cricut. But I like to use the Cricut because my handwriting is obnoxious and I want to make sure that people can read what the quilt label says. All right, so I've gotten my, I've gotten my text over there. I'm going to give you a word of advice. If you're using Cricut Design Space and you're not paying for Cricut Access, you can use system fonts. You can use the fonts that are on your computer to create your quilt label. However, know that it's going to draw an outline so that you'll either have to fill it in by using your marker to fill in the empty space, or you can always leave it open. Just know that it's going to create more bubble letters instead of filled in letters like I have here on my screen. And d during the course of this project, you'll see what that look, uh, you'll see that mine are typed out nicely by Cricut Design Space, uh, but just know that that's, not always the case for system fonts. My poor little computer is trying to keep up and it's just not, it's just not there.
All right, so I've gotten, I'm gonna put my name, and then I'm gonna put the year. So all that will pop up here in just a moment as my computer thinks about it. Man, this, this, I really need to get a new computer. This is very frustrating to me, just sitting here waiting for my computer to respond. It's thinking about it. So once this gets populated in, Man, this is embarrassing. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I feel really embarrassed right now with how slow this is. All right, there we go. Finally popped in there. So now I'm going to take my, um, uh, my text and I'm going to um, move it to where I want it on my label. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down because it's a little too big. And remember, I need to leave about a quarter of an inch on either side because that's where my uh, binding is going to go. So I want to try and get this a little bit smaller so that way it's not accidentally going underneath my binding. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I currently have my text highlighted. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select my um, square and I'm gonna hit a line and I'm gonna go ahead and center horizontally to right about there, perfect. Now my current operation for this is my pin, which is what I want. I'm gonna change the color. Now remember, you don't have to do this. You don't have to change the color unless you are going to be using multiple, uh, multiple markers or multiple colors. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to the purple infusible. So I'm gonna be using the purple infusible ink today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change that to reflect on my design, but you don't have to. Whatever pen or marker you put into your machine is the color it's going to be, right? So it doesn't matter too much what I, you know, if, if this is black on the screen and I put a purple pen in, that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my text again. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click on my object again, because now that I have my text ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and hit attach. So now my text is attached to my shape over here on the right side in our layers. You can see that there is an attached group. And so my attached group now has my pen and my shape on it. All right, so I am ready to cut this and, or I'm ready to write this and I'm ready to cut this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and click make it. I'm also going to start getting my Cricut ready. And I promise you, I will switch the camera back over to see what's actually happening when we get there. So I have my pen, I have my basic cut, I am ready to continue. It's gonna connect into my maker. I have the maker, the original maker, uh, not the maker three, it doesn't really matter though. Even if you don't have the maker, any of the um, Cricut line is able to use infusible products. So you'll be able to do that. I did forget to do one thing and I need to go back. I'm glad I thought about this right before I hit the go. I need to go back and I'm pretty sure somebody's screaming at me right now in the chat. I can't see it, but I know someone's screaming at me. I need to mirror. I need to reverse this. And I think it'll make a lot more sense when we get a little further along. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And there we go, I'm gonna go ahead and click on, I need to find copy paper and we're gonna be using just regular copy paper. I'm gonna flip my camera around so that way you can see what's going on. Yes, thank you so much. 
I see a few people messaging me in the chat saying, mirror, mirror, mirror. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, here we are back on this camera. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and this is my light grip mat. We're only using the light grip for uh, copy paper. Do not use this on a strong mat. Don't use copy paper on a strong mat. You will definitely regret that. And actually, let me pop back over into design space really quickly because I just realized I made a mistake. I'm gonna show you where my mistake is. So I just drew this onto my piece of paper. If I was to cut this out, it would not, I, I, let me back up and try this again. For my piece of paper, I'm using a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Do you notice that this is actually larger than eight and a half by 11? So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna rotate about 180, uh, not, not exactly 180 degrees, but 90 degrees here, because I want my text to end up on the page. I don't care if the rest of this gets cut off, that's not a big deal to me because I don't need it. But what I definitely need is that ink to end up on my piece of paper. And I know since my page is eight and a half that I'm gonna get most of that. The ink will all get on there, but I'll get most of my cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and back and get it ready to be sent out. It is still mirrored, which is good, so I need that. So it's gonna to talk to my maker again. Maybe, maybe it'll talk to my maker again. Christy says, I've used the iron on my highest setting when I couldn't get to my heat press. So if you have an iron, that will work. Let me turn off my maker and try again. It was still wanting to connect from last time and I don't think it had realized that I had canceled the print or the cut. Well, this is going great for a live video, right? Am I right? It wouldn't be a live video without some tech gremlins. I'm gonna cancel and try and see if I can connect into it again. It worked the first time and now it's like, nope, never gonna work again. Come on and connect. Right, it truly is off kilter, absolutely. Hello. Well, it was working a moment ago and now it's not wanting to work. <laughs> 
work anymore. <laughs> oh boy, isn't this just awesome? Am I using the Maker 3? I am not, I'm using the Maker. So the original Maker is what I'm using. Let me see if I can get design space to talk. I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel this all out. And we're gonna start it again. All right, we're gonna make it. Well, isn't that funny? I rotated it on the screen and it was like, no, I don't want it that way. Cricut Design Space does some interesting things sometimes, I feel like. If you've ever used Cricut Design Space, I think you'll understand. All right, I need to mirror. Oh, and it flips it around the other way. All right, fine. Okay, let's try this again. So this is like waiting for paint drying. We're just watching paint dry, that's all. That's all that's happening. Come on, maker. This is embarrassing, guys. This is terribly embarrassing. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so. Yep, right there with you. It is just being on its worst behavior. It's like kids are animals. Like you never put them on camera because you never know what's gonna happen. Why you no connect? Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all being supportive. All right, so this is not wanting to work. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna run it off of my phone because thank goodness Cricut Design Space can operate from mobile devices as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we'll run it that way. Um, I'm gonna pop it over into this camera. Hello everyone, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I'm gonna save the project and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it from my phone and we'll operate it that way. Let me get that saved, which it's doing right now. And hopefully that might speed up my computer as well. All right, it says the project was saved. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Cricut Design Space. We are done with Cricut Design Space on there for now. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up on my phone and we'll run it straight from my phone since y'all don't really need to see Cricut Design Space anymore. Y'all saw how easy it was for me to put that together. We'll just pull it up on the phone. All right, we're gonna make this. Mary says, I have the same problem sometimes with my Cricut not talking to my machine. Ha, ha, it happens. That was thunder. That scared me. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen on a live video. <laughs> Becca, write down what time this happened so I can clip that because that was scary. <laughs> like I'm having a hot flash now. All right, so I'm gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna cut this on my mat. Oh man, that was very loud. That hit just, I, I don't even know how close by, but that was very close. Um, all right, so next, let's do this hopefully. Mary says, I love that you're doing sewing. I just started and I love it. I'm so glad to hear that. So Becca says, time to buy a new Mac. Yes, that is on the list. I am dying to get one of the new M1 or when the new M2s come out, I would love to get one of those, but it's all about the moolah. And I don't have enough of that at the moment to purchase, uh, purchase that. All right, so, okay. We're ready. It already rained here and moved on. Well, you sent it up to me apparently because that was terrifying. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to my tabletop and you'll be able to see what happens. It's over there. All right, here. And I just unplugged my Cricut. Just unplugged, yep. my. Phone is now saying that there is an error. <laughs> yep, totally just unplugged my machine. This is going so great, guys. Let me tell you, this is just going swell. <laughs> oh, Becca, you are too kind. Thank you. Does the maker cut fabric? Great question, Elizabeth. Yes, it does cut. While well, this is getting started back up again. Um, yes, it does cut fabric. In fact, inside the little tool part compartment here, the Cricut has a rotary blade that is able to cut fabric. And this thing is great. Thank you so much, Becca. You are too kind. I really, really appreciate that. Apparently my Streamlab is on the lower level of every single scene that I have. All right, so it does cut fabric. You use a special mat. It's a pink mat that you will use to cut out fabric. Um, and I have, I have cut fabric out on the Cricut and I love doing it. Pam says, we have two and haven't used them yet. I'm in Weatherford and the storm just started here too. Well, we are not too far from each other. Um, I actually think that the bolt of lightning may have came out of the storm and like jumped a long ways distance. I, when I used to work at an amusement park, we had that happen every now and again where it um, jumped and it was, it would jump out of a storm. So, all right, so I'm gonna go back to copy paper. It tells me that I'm going to put my infusible ink pen into the accessory slot A. So I'm gonna put my purple infusible ink pen in slot A. I have my blade in compartment B. And I'm gonna move us over to this camera. Let's see if I can do this without knocking everything down. Look at that, look at that camera. 
Yes. Uh, so in order, uh, the question is, so you have to change out different cutting heads for different fabrics and papers. Yes. So inside my Cricut right now, because I'm using the paper, I am going to be using just the regular blade. But if I want to cut out fabric, then I'm going to use my rotary blade, which will make cutting out that fabric a whole lot easier, right? So um, yes, whenever you're going to be doing different things, the Cricut will actually tell you which blade to put in, and it does a double check as well. So if there's a problem with what you put in, say you put in the wrong type of cutting tool, it actually checks on it to make sure that you have the right one inserted. I have my regular blade in the housing and I have my pen. We are ready to start drawing. So it's going to draw first and then it's going to cut out that shape. So we're gonna go ahead and let that do its thing right now. And I'm actually gonna check out the window for a second because that was nerve wracking a few minutes ago. Oh, yep, I see lots of pretty clouds. Oh, and it has rained, it has rained here. So right now what's happening is it is um, taking the design that we have put into Cricut Design Space and it is now writing that all out. And I just realized that this design, I made it too big. I never shrank the size back down again. Ian's a smarty pants tonight, guys. Ian is a very, very smarty pants. Quilting on hold, trying to organize my basement. Two shelves units uh, so far. Putting all, the, all of my machines in one place with 46 machines. Sue, 46 sewing machines? Or Cricut machines, my goodness. Thanks, I'm learning about cutters. That's totally cool. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, like I said, I just realized I made this way too big. Way, 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 way too big. I'm gonna let it do its thing, but while it's doing its thing, I'm gonna go run and grab another piece of paper because we're gonna have to do this part again uh, because Ian's a dummy and doesn't know how to size things correctly. Oh man, this is totally what y'all want signed up to watch on a Monday night, right? You wanted to see Ian go absolutely bonkers. Yes, I did mirror. No, I didn't mirror. No, sure didn't. I didn't mirror and I didn't cut it the right size. <laughs> so, this is what we got. Oh, Sue says that she collects vintage machines. How awesome. Oh, and I just, oh, this is interesting. Um, I'm gonna have to up the pressure when I cut this out again because it did not cut all the way through my paper for some reason. All right, let's, let's do this the right way, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm gonna really quickly go back into Cr Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna customize this. I'm gonna replace what I have. So what I did wrong, here's what I did wrong. You'll notice whenever I first started in Cricut Design Space, I blew up my square just really big. What I intended to do was go in and put my text that I wanted onto it and then shrink it down to the size that I wanted. I forgot to shrink it. So right now it is a massive over 11 inches, which is way bigger than the six and a half inches of my shape here. So that was problem number one. Problem two, when I unplugged the machine and went to get it all started again, I didn't mirror. I did not mirror and it's just all over the place. Just a test run, you are so right. It is just a test run. That's all this is. It is all just a test run. Now, now Cricut Design Space is just giving me a spinning wheel on my phone. It's just sitting there spinning on my phone. This is great live, guys. We're doing great tonight.
just just lovely. So how's your Monday going? <laughs> I may not be able to create a shortened video of this video because it is all over the place. I'll find something. I'll be able to pull something out, but goodness gracious. You are showing us what not to do. You are so right. This is all a tutorial on what not to do to create quilt labels using Cricut. I, I'm, I'm not even kidding you guys. Look, it's still, it's just, it's just sitting there spinning. I tech demons plague us all. I'm gonna re I'm gonna try and relaunch it and see if I can get it to work. Okay, quit the app, restarted. Hopefully it works this time. Goodness gracious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, resize it to the correct size. So let me do that really quick. All right. Got a text message. <laughs> I'm trying to get it down to six and a half. And it's close to that. All right, so. Whew, I'm gonna click make it. I'm gonna make it on a mat. And Pam says, you can't say that you're boring. Correct. Nancy says it may have uh, knocked out my internet. I was wondering that. That happened to Tiffany yesterday. Thank goodness she is okay and everything is good there. All right, click next. Nope, I forgot to mirror. I need a mirror. Mirror for iron on. Okay, I just did that. Okay. Cross your finger, guys. I think I got it this time. We're going to try this again. We are going to try this again. All right, so I'm popping this into here. I'm gonna go ahead and up the pressure because you could, excuse me, you can actually designate in the app and even on the actual thing, you can actually say more default or less pressure um, right here under the pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and up the pressure a little bit, add some more pressure so that way hopefully it cuts all the way through. Am I sweating yet? All right, I've made it smaller. I have mirrored it. I think I'm ready. Cross your fingers that it works this time, guys. I've just been updating my fabric inventory before I put in the uh, minions to bed. I think I got it all. <laughs> mirror, 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 mirror on the wall. It's about right. I did get mirror this time, so we're good there. <laughs> that mirror kills me every time. Now, let's say that you don't have Cricut Design Space or you don't use a cutting machine of some kind. How can you get this effect? Easy. 
you can actually go into your uh, Microsoft Word or whatever publishing program that you want to use and you can use that tool. It has some ways for you to um, turn the text backwards and you can actually print that on a, on a regular piece of paper and then place another piece of paper on top of it and trace it. So that way you, uh, you trace it using those infusible inks or uh, sublimation, inks, excuse me. So that way you can have the desired effect, but it will be mirrored. So when you put it down on the piece of paper, it looks like it should and is in backwards. All right, we have just finished writing. It is now gonna go ahead and cut this out. I don't know why. Why did I not realize when I was doing everything that this is too big? I, I have no idea why I didn't realize that, but I didn't. Huzzah! I did it right this time, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on my pen because I don't want that to dry out. All right, so we are done with the Cricut for now. I'm gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna go back over here. All right, so as you can see, it is reversed and I have cut it the correct size this time. It still didn't quite cut all the way through, but that's okay um, because I can just use uh, the lines that were uh, made by the blade. Uh, where's my, there it is. So I'm gonna put my cover back on my mat. Put that under there. And we'll move this. We need to get this into a place where y'all can see it. All right, so. Get this popped out. Now, the reason it didn't cut through is because, oops, I just tore the paper a little bit. Um, because um, this, uh, this paper is a little heavier than copy paper. I probably should have put it at like light cardstock. Um, it probably would have cut through a lot better, but I at least have some lines to work from that I can pull this out. Okay, so I have my label. I have my fabric. I have a pressing mat. This one is from Cricut. Um, this is their pressing mat that they use with their heat press. Um, it helps to reflect the heat back into, there's actually layers that help reflect the heat back through. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do first I'm going to turn my heat press on and start the process of warming up. Okay, remember how I said this needs to be polyester? This needs to be polyester fabric. So as high of a polyester count as you can get for the fabric, that's what you want. Uh, because if it is cotton, this process will not work because the ink does not infuse into the fibers of cotton. So I'm gonna quickly just kind of flatten it out a little bit. And I'm gonna let it keep, yeah, there it goes. All right, so here's how we make our little sandwich. Put down a piece of cardstock. If you don't put cardstock underneath your infusible product, it will, it can infuse into the layers underneath. I have, I don't think, on this one. I have accidentally infused text into my mat, not on this one, but on my bigger one. So put cardstock down first. Next, I'm going to lay my piece of fabric down. And actually, I yeah, I'm gonna keep it like this. Next, we're gonna take the piece of paper and I'm going to get my tape ready for it. And that was my heat press letting me know it is up to a temperature. I don't think it's the temperature, but it is up to a temperature. Now apparently I did cut this a little smaller than I should, but actually that works out okay because it gives me room 
to put the tape down. And I'm using the tape just to hold it down. If I did not use the tape, and let's say that I put my press down and I wiggled, if I wiggled the press around on accident, it could end up causing a ghosted image. And that's where the infusible ink started to go into the fabric, but when it moved, it put it somewhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tape there. I could go absolutely hog wild and create as much, you know, I could put a whole bunch of pieces of tape on here, but really you just need a little bit and they make thicker tape too than what this is. I'm just using, um, I got this off of Amazon and it has worked perfectly for me. Now you're not gonna use regular tape. Don't use regular tape with this process because your regular tape will melt. We don't want that to happen. I'm making myself a little tab so that way the next time I go to use this tape, I can get it off more easily. Okay, Cricut Design Space has, or excuse me, the Cricut website has an easy press guide to tell you how much to press and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna enter that information. I had it all set up and then it, of course is deleted now. Um, so I'm gonna be using a infusible ink pen marker on copy paper. My base material, I always say is t-shirt, um, even though I bought, um, this is just uh, polyester fabric off of a bolt, I always say t-shirt and it comes out fine. And I'm gonna be using a pressing mat. What's the tape? The tape is a heat resistant tape. So if you say um, uh, heat resistant tape or heat pressing tape, this will come up in Amazon. All right, so my temperature is going to be 385. And I'm gonna be pressing for 40 seconds. So I'm gonna set that on my easy press. All right, so I've got 385, it's gonna heat up just a hair more. And basically I built my sandwich, it is ready to press. There it goes, it is heated up. Hi, Dayla. I am doing sublimation, that is correct. So now that I have everything, oh, <laughs> almost forgot the butcher paper. That's important because you don't want to end up getting ink all over your press, no matter what kind of heat press you have. Or iron. Come on. What kind of material am I using? I am using a high polyester count material. I think this is 100% polyester. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a piece of butcher paper that is larger than my object here. See, just like that. And now I'm gonna take my heat press and I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna hit the go button. And it's gonna start counting down. So right now the infusible ink is heating up and it's sublimating into my fabric. I tend to use my smallest easy press, not the mini, but the smallest easy press because most of the time this will fit whatever quilt label size that I'm working on, because remember I use that six and a half inch template to do it. Thought it was done, but it's still counting down. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let this cool for a second. I don't wanna burn my little phalanges, so I'm gonna let it cool for a second. 
And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. I can see it in the light, but um, can you kind of see the ghosted image of the text on there? This is why we use the butcher paper, because we don't want that image to get onto your heat press or onto your iron or anything else. So that's why we always use butcher paper whenever we're doing uh, any kind of sublimation project. Christy has a wonderful point. Make sure it is butcher paper, butcher paper, not waxed paper. Waxed paper will end up melting and causing all kinds of problems. Sublimation is a lot of fun. Hi, Katie. This is my first time seeing one of your lives. Excellent. Unfortunately, you came in on a technical gremlin night, but I'm glad you're here. Oh, and I just got a notification of dime-sized hail. Awesome. Hi, Teresa. Welcome. So it's still going to cool. Freezer paper also works. I've not used freezer paper, but um, remember that freezer paper does have that um, coating on it, so be very careful with that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. <gasps> ba -ba -ba -bum. There we go. So there we have our uh, quilt label all ready to go. I'm ready to take this and what it, like I said, what I do is I will take it and fold it in half and press it. And then I will sew this into one corner of my quilt. So that way I don't have to worry about finishing the edges or doing any edge treatment. And I can, um, whenever I'm putting the binding on, it will go in to the binding. What do we think? Pretty cool, right? Do, do, do. I love that. Ooh, I just heard more thunder. What do we think, guys? That's how you make quilt labels using the Cricut and Sublimation ink. Vicky says, I'll have to replay this. Good thing that there's a replay, right? So that's how you do it. Just that simple, just that easy. It only took me an hour with all the tech gremlins to make it work. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Any questions on how do you use sublimation ink to create your quilt labels? What state are you in? I'm in Texas. I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. Oh, thank you, Donna. Donna says, love this. You nailed it. I don't know about the nailed it part. I think if I was on the show, nailed it, this would all be par for the course. <laughs> but I don't know about actually nailing it. Thank you, Rich. Any questions, let me know your questions. This is the perfect opportunity to talk about uh, how this works, why this works, what, you know, stuff like that. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat now. I'm happy to do kind of a Q&A section on it, um, but it really is just that simple. And the cool thing about Cricut Design Space or if you're using a silhouette or whatever machine you're using, you can bring in those objects and pictures, the SVGs, and do uh, doodles or specific drawings for the quilt theme. So um, many of y'all saw on my social media, I um, did the Tula Pink's Mad Hatter's Tea Party quilt. That was actually a wedding present for a friend of mine. That was the first quilt I've ever given away <laughs> as a gift. It's crazy, right? Um, so that quilt, I uh, took the time and I put a teacup picture Using my infusible ink pens, I used the infusible ink pens 
to um, draw a teacup on the quilt label and really made that label very specific to that quilt. So um, I know a lot of times out there people complain about quilt labels not being, like the pre-made ones, not really being too personalized. And that's the cool thing about this process is you can really make that quilt label the way you want it um, whenever it goes onto the quilt. Can you do that with the cut and scan? Um, as long as the cut and scan uses um, an infusible or sublimation ink, you can do it. Um, I don't know exactly, I haven't ever worked with a cut and scan, but I know that it does have a place for a pin to go into. And I'm sure that there are a lot of companies who sell adapters to fit different types of pins into. So I'm pretty sure you probably could. Um, I turned into an Epson printer, sublimation printer. Uh, that is another great way to do it is to use a sublimation printer in order to make your quilt labels. With that one, you could get really fancy and like really customize that label. Um, since I'm only using the pens, it's kind of limited on, you know, drawing and all that kind of stuff. But with the printers, you could actually print out images or backgrounds or whatever you want with that. So you could get really fancy with that. Good job. Can you do any uh, designs along with the text? Yes, like I was just saying, you can bring in images and pictures using um, Cricut Design Space in order to do that. And yes, you can. Oh, put the camera back on me, forgot. Hi, it's me, you know, your friendly off-kilter crafter. Um, let's see. Will you be making these for sale by chance? I will not. <laughs> I will not be manufacturing and creating labels. Um, it is, uh, I, I wanna be able to teach y'all how to do it. Um, but I don't have room for another side hobby and gig and whatnot. So no, but good question. Are the pins sold where Cricut supplies are sold? Barbara, yes, they are sold wherever Cricut sells their products. Um, they're available at crafting stores on the Cricut website and on Amazon, you can purchase sublimation inks and those are uh, able to do the same thing. Um, just remember that they may not fit into your cutting machine depending on what size they are. This is very clever of you, Ian, drawing the teacup on the label. Thank you, Rich. That was a fun customation. Do you got to have a cut and scan? You do not have to have a cut and scan. You do not have to have a, a cutting machine of any type. As long as you're using infusible or sublimation pens, you can do the same process. You'll just have to get a little more clever by either printing out your design in reverse and then tracing over it on a separate piece of paper, like literally put a blank piece of paper over your design and trace it out using the uh, markers. Uh, you can do that um, or you can freehand it, but just remember you have to freehand in reverse. Can you get many colors of pens? Yes, there are a lot of colors of pens out there. Pens and markers, um, they come in the full spectrum of the rainbow. Pam says that she uses her baby lock embroidery machine to make labels. I have so much to learn on both them and the crickets, and I have no idea when I can do that. I know it takes time. It takes time. I want to make um, labels using my... Um, my embroidery as well. I just haven't sat down to work on that. Ian, I have no idea what you are doing, but I'm here to support you. Thank you, Teresa. I really do appreciate that. Oh, Teresa, don't worry about it. No big deal. No big deal at all. All right, guys. That's how you make quilt labels using the Cricut. It's a lot easier, right? It's a lot easier to do it that way, in my opinion. Um, I have done some, um, I have done for my Sparkle and Shine quilt. Oh, that was the other thing I was gonna do. Do I have that in arm's reach? I have another tip for y'all. I'm gonna keep talking. How are you liking your Bernina? I love my Bernina. I absolutely love my Bernina. I'm gonna come over here and um, keep talking to y'all while I'm trying to grab my next 
thing here, and I don't know where it is. I, I'm gonna have to do a quick tip because I figured out a way to do quilt labels for competition when it was, basically what happened was I entered my Sparkle and Shine quilt into the North Texas Quilt Festival. I hand wrote my label when I first put that quilt together and I didn't know that I was gonna put it into a show and so I just did my name, the design, um, the year, and I think that was it. When I entered my quilt into the show, their quilt label required a lot more information. It required my address, my cell phone number. There was a lot more things that needed to go on to it. And so instead of putting a second label on there, I found a trick. I actually cut out a piece of fabric, wrote all the information that was needed on there, and then I used carpet tape and cut it to the size of that label and stuck it on there because I knew I wanted to be able to take it off, right? I didn't want to have to attach it completely. I just wanted it on there long enough for the show and then take it off, take it off after. Worked like a freaking charm. All I had to do was just line the back of that fabric with the actual information that was needed uh, and then stuck it onto my quilt and it stuck, it, the carpet tape sticks like nobody's business. It worked perfectly. And after the show was over with, I just pulled off that secondary label that I created for it and I'm back in business again, no problem. Just don't forget to take that off before you put it into the washing machine. Rich says, very pretty shirt you're wearing. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for this evening. It has been a um, tech gremlin evening to say the least here, but I really... Something just happened. Rich, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. I was like, what is that noise? Um... I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh boy. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate y'all taking the time to come out and watch this video, even with all the tech gremlins. And of course, if you have more questions on this topic, always leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget also to hit the like button. That really does help my channel. And of course, to subscribe as well. I thank y'all so much for sticking with me through this evening and learning how to put, uh, how to make quilt labels from your Cricut or other die cutting machine. And I will see y'all next time. Don't forget next week, we don't have a live video, but there will be a video up for you to check out. And then the following week, uh, we are going to do a postcard. We're gonna make a fabric postcard. You're not gonna wanna miss that. Hope everybody has a great day. And remember guys,